Well, hello, and welcome to the first ever Mike on a Monday. I just realized that I'm doing this thing. Why do... You know, the guys on TV, they, they especially do that. They they, they like to, to stand here and host you while they, they talk to you, and, and like to like, like this brings you closer to them. I'm pretty sure some other people have talked about this, but I, I just find it ridiculous. I, I never... Like, seriously, how, how do you talk to your buddies when you're hanging? It's like, hey, what's up? Yeah. I don't actually do that either. I'm very alone. <clears throat> which is why I have a lot of time to make internet videos, which is why you're here. And I'm still doing the hand thing, but we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I've been doing videos for a few years now. Had a lot of fun doing them, too. It's, it's really cool to be able to uh, go do something or go interview somebody and have the tape to prove it and to, to see how they look, how their faces are, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. If you are doing something with them that is funny, you can actually show it rather than describe it forever and ever and ever. So that's why we're here this week. I want to uh, just reach out in a different way. And, and, and frankly, there, there's so much negativity out there. Some people have criticized interviews of mine in the past saying that, you know, the, the, you're, you're throwing softballs. You're being fluffy. You know what? The, the world needs more fluff. I don't know what that means, but it, it just makes sense to me that can't we just be happy once in a while? I think so. So what I'd like to do is take you from week to week. We'll find something new, something different to do with famous people. I work in country radio, so there's a good chance there's going to be a country star or two thrown in the mix. But you never know who we're going to find. There's tons of people out there to talk to. There's lots of fun to be had. This week, though, to kick off the mic on a Monday, I thought it would be fun to actually bring you uh, two really cool guys. Uh, first of all, he's a Canadian country music superstar, Paul Brandt. We're going to talk to him in just a moment. And also, Isaiah Mustafa. The name might not be household yet, but if I said to you he was the man your man could smell like, Mr. Old Spice, yeah, we're going to talk to him and answer the question that always gets asked whenever I talk to anybody. I'll show him a picture. I'll show him the tape. They'll say, well, was he nice? Was Mr. Old Spice a jerk? Yeah, no, he wasn't. We're going to talk to him as well. But first, he is one of the biggest stars in Canadian country music history, period. He is the benchmark in our country these days, and he's had some exciting things go on in his life. From having a new son, to a new baby on the way, to a new box set coming up, and working with one of the hottest new Canadian bands, I had the chance at the CCMA's pre-haircut to catch up with Paul Brandt. Here it is. I tell you, it doesn't get much bigger than Paul Brandt. Thank you. And I appreciate mean, that. I mean that as far as the magnitude right. of your stardom. Oh, well, I'm glad that you said that. We had a complicated issue we'll get to in just a moment on right. the videotape, but uh, for everybody listening on the radio, uh, safe to say slip of the tongues happened. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's good. Anyway, uh, welcome back. Thank I guess you. It's the best way to put it. It's, it's been a while. I mean, we had you on the award show last year uh, with High Valley, who yeah. you've been working with, and they're yeah. doing amazing things now. Tell us what it's been like mentoring a new group like oh, that. Oh, man, I don't know about that. They're, they're incredible guys, and, and to get the opportunity to work with them, has been a huge thing for me. Um, they have been on the road more than most artists that, that have been on the road for, for years and they're just getting started. I mean, they've worked their butts off, incredibly talented, and uh, I got together with Brad at my barn. I do a lot of work at my barn now and, and uh, um, we were uh, doing some writing and I just said to him, you know, tell me what you love the most. Like, what's the thing that, you know, you just absolutely love in life? They're trying to figure out something that he could be passionate about while he's singing, you know? And he gets this far away look in his eye. He goes, man, I just love riding the combine. He said, you know, I'm like, okay, well, let's write a song about the combine so that's the single wow. they've got going on right now i think they did an incredible job with it and and uh, I'm, I'm i'm excited for these guys i think it's going to do really really big things for them you're coming back uh, in official capacity we don't want to blow the surprise for people that are watching <laughs> the show tonight i I, I noticed some things. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, this is a show you don't want to miss. It's going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. But, uh, you know, we're going to have Carolyn Don Johnson on just a bit as well. And, and, you know, you come back again and again, time after time. It's always quality. It's always great. You always put 100% oh, of your effort you. into it. What keeps you going? You know, I love getting the opportunity to perform for people because it helps them to escape and just have fun. I enjoy that part of what I get to do. But I also get to use this platform to do things that I think really 
change the world that we live in. And, and I, um, I, I've started a foundation, we're in the process of doing that right now, where we're going to be taking fans to different places even around the world to spotlight some of the areas where there's great need, including here in Canada. And uh, we'll be giving back portions of proceeds from everything that we do from this point on to make sure that uh, we're continuing to use the country music to raise the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars that have been raised already um, with our fans. And, and uh, th that kind of stuff, when you think about, you know, you get on stage to do an award show to have a blast and you could actually save someone's life while you're doing it too. There's nothing that gives me more energy in the whole world. It's pretty amazing. We're, we're going to talk about life here for just a moment. I saw your beautiful wife, Liz, uh, and you going through the, uh, the gifts. Yeah, right here. she's loving that. We had some funny tape with Terry <laughs> Clark earlier on going through it, and she walked us through the entire thing. But, um, you know, you couldn't help but notice it. There's a bit of baby action. Absolutely, yeah. We've got six <laughs> weeks to go for baby number two, and uh, we've been enjoying that. You know, the last two and a half, three years in between um, music for me has been just being a daddy at home and, and really enjoying that. Joseph is almost two and a half years old now, and he's a great guy. I just love uh, spending time with him and being around him. And he's with Grandma and Grandpa for this show, but uh, me and Liz have really enjoyed that time. But she said about halfway through this pregnancy, she said, you know what, we're, we're, I'm ready to get on the road again. So we're going to hit it hard uh, next year in the fall. We have two albums worth of new music that are coming and, and uh, I, I can't wait to start sharing this stuff with everybody. Last but not least, you, you touched on it there, but uh, there are rumors of a box set going on. What's happening? Yeah, you know, it's, I'm calling it a book set right now a because yeah, we want to include all of the music from the Small Towns and Big Dreams album up until now and then the, and then these two new projects that we've been working on along with a booklet that, that kind of explains the behind the scenes of what's happened in my career and kind of retell the story and, and, uh, and you know, it's kind of do it in a way where it's a special thank you to the fans who brought us to where we are today so I'm, I'm pumped about it I can't wait four words my friend you still got it Paul Thanks, Brandt man. I appreciate it good Thanks. seeing you so there you have it Paul Brandt absolute class act I don't think anybody can argue that and what I found amazing was uh, just how passionate he is about everything you know if you go back through that interview and you watch it again you'll see that he, the smile on his face doesn't go away and he just seems really happy and content and at the same time with all the charity work he does with all the artists he's working with and with everything he's doing he's still giving back so that to me uh, makes a pretty cool guy overall we switch from country cool to just plain damn cool his name is Isaiah Mustafa. He's the Old Spice guy. It's been a whirlwind career for him. He went from being a virtual unknown actor to being the guy that everybody wishes that, well, their guy could be. I wish I could be him, frankly. But I got to chat with him. Isaiah Mustafa, Mr. Old Spice, answering the question whether or not he's as cool as he is on TV. Well, here's the answer. Is it okay to call you Old Spice guy? You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> I'm pretty easy going, so... I was going to say, that's the cool thing about you is that uh, you kind of just shot on the scene with this commercial. Yeah. Uh, take us to the days before this. I mean, was there an audition? Was it... Yeah, I was just... Something come well, up? I've been acting since like 2001, 2002, and just going and doing little roles here and there and getting the commercial here or there, but this was just a normal audition that I went out on. It wasn't anything special, and, and uh, it's turned into something special, but it was just a normal run-of-the-mill audition that you get sent out on, and, and you know, uh, God willing, I got it, so... You're basically become a pop culture icon of sorts. I mean, people walk around now and talk about how I'm on a horse or, uh, or tickets are now diamonds and, and things like that. I mean, you're becoming a household name. Uh, people are talking about how you're going to be a Halloween costume this year. And wow, that's, you know, <laughs> that's flattering. I never thought I'd ever be a Halloween costume, but uh, yeah, you man. Think it's flattering or do you think maybe they're cheap? Because really all they need is a bottle of Old Spice and a towel. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it might be cheap. <laughs> I'm, I'm the best, the next, next best thing next to a ghost, right? <laughs> Everybody has seen it either online or on oh, TV. Nice. Uh, you've become basically an international star. I mean, you're here in Canada. You've never been to Edmonton before? No, never, never. I love it, though. It's been great so far. I've been having a great time. This is a huge mall, I'll tell you that much. Well, where'd you grow up? I, in uh, California. Los Angeles, Oxnard, Mission Viejo, all up and down the coast of California. Had you ever been to Canada before? I go to Vancouver. I used to for a while to see the beautiful women there, but... Uh, <laughs> They're not as beautiful as the women here in Edmonton. Wow. Old Spice guy. Not afraid to pander to any hometown crowd. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Kind of the cool thing about you, I mean, I've seen you uh, all over the place. You were on Ellen not yeah. too long ago. Yeah, Ellen, I, it, that's been like such a, a cool thing um, for me. I've been on her show three, three separate times, and each time it's so much fun, you know, because she's such a nice person, So you and you really get that with her. Like, she gives you like such a warm feeling there so I, I just love doing her show well people say the same thing about you I mean uh, let's face it it was a gig that just kind of exploded and and to, to go in from that day where you said it was basically a commercial audition like anything else to where you are now I mean you're up uh, you're up in Calgary 
you're here in Edmonton, uh, you're, you're touring, just meeting folks who, who want to meet you. Uh, that, it's always nice. I, I really believe that it, it's like all about the fans, you know, because that's who makes you. So if, if you can't take a minute to say hi or to shake a hand or take a picture, you know, like what are you, what are you doing it for? You know, like, I mean, I know that's, that's why I like, I love stopping and saying hi to people, you know. If I have the time to do it, I'll do it, you know. And even if I don't have the time, <laughs> I make the time to do it because after all, the fans make you who you are, so. You know. When you're walking through places, you get recognized, that sort of thing. How many people have asked you to, to call their friends? or? Oh, that yeah, you know what's funny is I get that in the in, in, uh, United States a lot. People ask me to get on their voicemail messages and, and give, leave a voicemail. But you actually, uh, you did a series of YouTube interviews, yeah. Q&As, where you actually, uh, I was upset because uh, last week I just changed it, but you were actually my voicemail for the longest period after all the editing and stuff. But, you know, to, to have people that just want to have you on their voicemail and and have you do the character. That's you know? that's so funny to me because on, on my outgoing voicemail, I don't even have myself. So, so <laughs> I, I just have, I don't think I could now, you know what I mean? I could, I could never put myself on my own outgoing message because people would be like, what, why don't you sound like that, you know? Or, I don't know. It's, do you, it's do you find yourself stumped? People asking you to come up with like profound, random things to say now? No, nah, I don't get stumped on it because I, I've, uh, like Eric, uh, Eric Coleman and Craig Allen, the guys who wrote the, the spot, uh, I've hung out with them so much and, and done so many things with those guys from, from White and Kennedy that, uh, like, I hear their voice in my head now. So people say something, I just I, I can throw out a, uh, a, a White and Kennedy-ism and, uh, <laughs> and channel them for the best most part. So if you were to welcome everybody in Canada who's watching this right now, you would say to them? Welcome to my world. My world. Which is now his world. Which is now my world. Which is now our world which is now no world. Good night. That just blew my mind. <laughs> You're still here. Cool. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching it. We're going to have a lot of fun. Next week's episode, we go back to the CCMAs. They have this really cool area. It's called the Gift Lounge. All right, all the big stars, all the big presenters, everything else, they get to go through the Gift Lounge. They get free swag. So we go shopping with... Terry Clark. How do you hold one of these? <laughs> Seriously. How many purses do you own, Terry? Yeah, just like that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> like, like, like real feminine. I suddenly feel like I have just had a sex change and I don't know what to do with myself. Plus, I rekindle an old rivalry with Michelle Wright. How does this part of the video end? I got a lot of stuff coming up for you. Hopefully you can join me for it. Thank you so much for watching the first ever Mike on a Monday. We'll talk to you again soon.